And uh, let's just believe the Lord for whatever you have made up together this morning. Let's join together in faith this morning. Father, we come before you once again this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, once again for the privilege to gather in this house in the presence of the Lord and also in the presence of God's people. Thank you for each and every one this, that drove in today, Lord, to be a part of this assembly. Lord, those that will be logging on and joining us by live streaming, Lord, we thank you for each and every one. Lord, we pray for the service this morning, asking that you'd have your way, that everything that's said and done will bring you glory and honor, that it would edify the body, Lord, strengthen the body and equip the body, Lord, to stand during this perilous and difficult day. Lord, anoint our singers this morning as they bring us into the throne of praise. Lord, and help us, Lord, to shake off old heavy bands this morning. Lift up holy hands, Lord. Let there be liberty in the house of God to praise our God and King this morning. You're worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Let us, Lord, this morning be filled with joy and filled with peace, Lord, as we come into this presence, your mighty presence this morning. Lord, we pray for all the brethren across the country this morning that's preaching this glad story. We pray for those, Lord, that are still determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Those that are preaching the exclusive message of the cross this morning, we lift them up this morning, Lord. We pray, God, that you would bless them in their service this morning, that their stream would go out far and wide to impact Praise the world. God with this message, the only message that you've given us in this final hour, or at any time, Lord, but may it go forth, Lord, without hesitation, without fear, nor favor, yeah. Lord, and let it go around the world in this final hour of the church age. Yeah. Lord, I need your help this morning. Yeah. As always, let there be healing physically, mentally, and spiritually this morning in the body of Christ, Lord. I am asking, Lord, also that you anoint my lips to speak and every ear to hear this morning. Lord, let your word go forth with clarity and understanding. May it accomplish what you desire this yes. morning. Lord, we pray, God, that there would be deposited upon fertile ground of the heart, a heart that's made ready to receive this yes. morning. Let it manifest and change lives. Bondage is broken by your mighty power and a closer walk with thee through taking up that cross every day and denying self, Lord. Once again, Lord, we just want to thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to worship you and share your word in the context of the cross, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, that you have allowed us to be a part of what you're doing. All is much to be thankful for today, but it's also a humbling, Lord. But, Lord, in spite of it all, Lord, we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. We ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. Amen and amen. And amen. Amen. Yes. Glad to have Brother Matthew Gaddy with amen. us this morning. Amen. amen. He's from over the Tuscaloosa uh, region, and we're excited to have him with us this morning. Amen. Give him a good warm welcome. And while you're doing that, amen, let's just worship our great God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am so glad to see everybody this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. We made it through, didn't we? Amen. Thank the Lord. He's so good to us. Ain't praise it great? Ain't he so great? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's praise him this morning. Amen. With, with an open heart, just say, Lord, fill me. Fill me this morning. Yes. Let me have the joy in my heart that you desire me to have, Lord, because so many people are down and out. Praise but thank God, just like Brother Wayne said, we're chosen here today. Amen. Because of God. Ain't, we could be lost today, but we're saved today by the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Bye. 
Thank you for that blood, that precious blood. Thank you, Jesus, for saving us, Lord, for delivering us, Lord Jesus, from our sins. We thank you, Lord God. Yes. Praise your holy name. It's all about the blood. Anything else is just false. It's all about what Jesus did. He shed his blood for our sins that we could call God our Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus has brought... The Lord has brought you from a long way. He has taken you out of all the things that used to be Amen. in your life. Hallelujah. And look at you now. You're serving him because you love him and you cherish what he's did for you. And I thank God we have a testimony today. Amen. We got a testimony Amen. that we can tell others about. And I know you are. I know that, that other people are seeing how you're living now and what you were before and what you are now. And they're looking at you and saying, look, I want what they got. You know what I'm saying? Now, you, you may not see that at times. I mean, you might be thinking the whole world's against you, and most of them are. But, but there are some out there that's looking and seeing how you represent right. God. So Amen. we have to be careful how, how we live our life because every detail of our life, they're watching. They're watching. Right. Just like an inspector. He's inspecting everything that goes through that assembly line. He, and people are expecting, are inspecting you as well. And thank God that, look, I don't have to please anybody but my father. But if I'm living in the Son, I'm pleasing the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. As I look back over my life and I think things over, I can truly say Sometimes my birth 
this morning. Good to be in the presence of God and in yes. the presence of God's yes, people yes. this morning. Amen. We're going to worship Hallelujah. the Lord with our giving this morning. As always, I want to encourage those who are listening by India, whether you join us by Facebook or by YouTube. Mm-hmm. All you got to do this morning, amen, we're passing the plate in your living room or wherever you are this morning. Just go over to our church website, Crossway Ministries. Dot org. Just as soon as it opens up there, you'll see a donation button. You tap on it, and it will guide you giving by PayPal. If you're not able to do that, amen, you can mail your gift in. Just mail it to Crossway Ministries, P.O. Box 9097, Greenwood, Mississippi, 38930. We want to thank you, those that have joined us in the sanctuary this morning. Those that have joined us by internet, amen, we want to thank you so very much for your giving to the Lord's work here in the heart of the Delta. To help us to continue to take this gospel, this one and only gospel throughout this region and literally around the world as many, to as many as would log on and drink of the water of life freely. It's a joy to be able to give this morning and so into the work of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we just simply ask you one more time, Lord God, that you would multiply this offering many times over to meet the need. Bless that giver (coughs) this morning. Hallelujah. And Father, we ask it all in the mighty name of Jesus, giving you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. Those that are here this morning, amen, we can uh, fellowship a little bit this morning, march on down, give in the offering plate, amen, and God bless each and every one of you this morning in your giving. person truly examines themselves and looks in the word of God, you cannot argue that those that are truly saved have been delivered and are continually delivered. The Jesus of the scriptures, what he died to deliver us from sin, amen. So those that are not delivered, never been changed, never delivered, they don't have the Jesus of the scriptures working in them. Praise God. Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world deliverance deliverance it's what Jesus died to give us freedom freedom from the dominion of our sin grace is not an umbrella just to cover us It's the power of God working in us. Deliverance, deliverance, Jesus died to give. I 
marvel that you're so soon removed from him who called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel which is not another but there be some who would trouble you and pervert this gospel of Jesus Christ but though we are an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you let him be a curse deliverance deliverance it's what Jesus died to give us freedom freedom from the dominion of our sin the message of the cross is the gospel it still sets the captives free deliverance deliverance jesus died to give are you walking in the light your faith in the blood the word of the lord is still right and all his works are done freedom freedom from the dominion of our sin thank you Jesus Deliverance. That's what it's all about, ain't it? Delivering us. The Lord delivered us from our sins. You know, you know, sometimes, you know, we, I catch myself thinking about, you know, the church itself, the body and everything. I pray for, I pray for every one of y'all because I love every one of y'all and I care about y'all. And I know a lot of things going on and, you know, behind the scenes and stuff that you don't see and all this, you know, all this other stuff. But, you know, the church body is missing out on a lot of things because you know we need to step in and, and ask the Lord to help us to draw to be knitly fitted together you y'all understand what I'm saying you know the church of the in the first in the New Testament church you know they they were in tune with everything that was going on because they knew about what Jesus did for them and they were and these people and the disciples and all the the new believers was going out and telling people you know, we kind of lax because we say, well, we'll let the other guy do this or, you know, let them do it because that's what they do. They do outreaches and all that stuff, you know. We always have a, we always tend to have a tendency to do things like that and just wait on the other person to do it. But it's our obligation to go out and tell people, too. We can't just sit around and let someone else. Just because there's churches all over the nation that will say they're, they're, they have outreaches that will go out. But it's not about them going out, but it's also about you going out. Amen. You know, every day we're on a job. And I, I'll be the first one to admit, I don't do it every day. But, I, you know, we, we need to be witnessing to the, Lord, to, to the people about the Lord. Because the day's coming when the rapture will take place. And those who thought that they were living right with the Lord or had a relationship with the Lord may not have. That's the reason why the Lord says, study to show yourself approved. You know, we might miss out on something if we're not studying the Word of God. If we're not going out here, and, and, and I know it's, I'm not putting works on anybody, but these are fruits of the Spirit. This is the fruits of what Jesus has done for you. You go out and you do these things because you love the Lord. You want to please Him, and you want to show Him that you love Him. And He knows you. He knows if you love Him already. He, you know, you don't have to tell Him. I mean, it's good to, to tell the Lord you love Him, but He already knows the heart. You know, I had a person one time tell me, and I said, my wife probably kind of chuckled at it, but uh, we had a person tell us one time, she had asked him, said, won't you come to church with us today? And uh, there's only one church, Jesus Christ and Crucified. But she told him, she said, uh, she told him, 
She said, won't you come to church with us, you know, today? And the person told her, said, look, I've already did the church thing. If the church thing is uh, this week, oh, I already did the church thing this week. So if the church, if the Lord knows your heart already, why are you even going? There's nothing to be accomplished for the Lord if if you're just going through routine. Hey, the Pharisees and Sadducees had everybody thinking that if they followed them, everything was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Even even Jerusalem, I mean, even um, even Israel, they were going through routines. They'd go and offer up bulls and bullocks or whatever, and and they were thinking they were doing God's will. But it was going, it was getting to be a routine. It was nothing about. Look what the Lord has done. To, you know, look what the, the the Lamb of God has done for us. They were just looking at, well, let me go carry my lamb up there so I can get this done today, and I did my lamb thing this week. That's the same thing people are doing today. Let's don't get in the, let's don't get in the habit of thinking that way. God knows everyone's heart. I had a person tell me one time, was so close to me that I loved a dear brother, and and my wife knows it. He told me, he said, I said, I, tell, I told him, I said, look, God. God loves you so much, but you need to be in a cross-preaching church. And then he told me, he said, most people would tell you, well, God knows my heart. Yes, he does know your heart. But he also says in the word of God that your heart is desperately wicked. So you can't trust by feelings. You can't trust by what your heart tells you because you can all mess up just like I have in the past and will probably mess up a whole lot more before it's over with. But by the grace of God, it's going to get less and less and less. Until finally the Lord said, come, come with me, my fair, my fair child. I'm, I'm hoping I'm speaking this right. But you see what I'm saying? My heart is the church will get on fire. I'm afraid what's going to happen is things are going to get so hard, just like it did in the early church, that God's going to have to cause tribula, not tri um, what is it? Persecution. persecution before he can get us right back to where we need to be with him because persecution will cause us to cry out to God like never before. And I pray we won't have to do that. But I, in my heart, I feel like, God, that's what you're going to have to do because I'm lacking too. I need the Lord. I need the Lord to help me more and more. And I know I'm slacking in a lot of things, but I know God knows what's best for me. Your soul is so much, much more important that he would send you through a tribulation, not trip, I keep saying that, but persecution period to where he'll draw your heart to him fully without even looking. I ain't, I'm not worried about what the other person's doing. I want to live for my Lord today. Amen. The whole world's doing what it's doing, but we, we're going to serve the Lord no matter what. That's what we have to make our mind up. Amen. We have to make our mind up. Thank you, Jesus. It's hard to see the storm blowing over anytime soon. It's hard to hear any hope in the headlines or how to know what's true. We've been trusting in the broken to make us whole, but there's no new Still the one we've always known We need the healer We don't need another hero We need the healer Deep down every hurting heart knows We need the healer And only
When all the searching is done There's no worldview, no religion That can make the blind eyes see Let the eyes of our heart be open To the healing that we need We need the healer We don't need another hero We need the healer Deep down every hurting heart knows We need the healer And only Jesus is the healer We need the healer We don't need another hero We need the healer Deep down every hurting heart knows We need the healer And only Jesus is the healer More than comfort we need the King More than gifts we need the giver More than blessings we need your presence More than the healing we need the healer More than comfort we need the King More than gifts we need the giver More than blessings we need your presence More than the healing we need the healer More than comfort we need the King More than gifts we need the giver More than blessings we need your presence More than the healing we need the healer We don't need another hero We need the healer Deep down every hurting heart knows We need the healer And only Jesus is the healer More than comfort we need the King More than gifts we need the giver More than blessings we need your presence more than the healing, we need the healer. More than comfort, we need the king. More than gifts, we need the giver. More than blessings, we need your presence. More than the healing, we need the healer. More than comfort, we need the king. More than gifts. Lift your hands and give him praise in the house of God this morning. One more time, amen. Just exalt him and magnify him. He's worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor this morning. Hallelujah. We need him this morning. Praise God. We need Christ and him crucified. 
Hallelujah. We need him this morning. Amen. Because everything we need is wrapped up in the person of Jesus Christ. And the means by which we receive it all is through faith in the cross. Glory to God. Amen. He's still the great I am. He's still the great I Not the great I was. He's still the great I am. Everything you need this morning, everything that you have need of this morning is found in the person of Jesus Christ. And once again, it comes to us by way of our faith alone in what Jesus did at Calvary alone. Amen. Thank you, singers and musicians. Thank you so very much. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Good to see everybody this morning. Amen. Appreciate Brother James filling in last Sunday. Amen. Tr tr tremendous message. We we listened by the uh, Facebook uh, Sunday morning. Amen. If you're not listening, let me encourage you to go back and listen to that. Amen. Praise God. This morning, amen, the Lord laid this particular message on my heart Wednesday night as I was driving home from the uh, Contending for the Faith broadcast on Wednesday night. Take your Bibles and go over to the book of Romans this morning. Amen. The book of Romans and uh, I'm not really sure exactly how this is go going to go. I have a number of uh, scriptures that I believe I will probably use this morning. It would sure be good for you if you wrote down the scriptures that I present to you this morning. Then go back and study these for yourselves. Be sure that what the preacher is saying that it is right according to the Word of God. I mean, let me challenge, challenge those who are listening by Internet this morning. Get you a good King James Bible, word-for-word word translation, follow along, do the same thing. Amen. Judge what I preach, what I teach based upon the Word of God in view of the cross. Amen. Let's go ahead and get started this morning. Praise God. Amen. And I'm, 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 one of the dilemmas that I have is knowing exactly where to start this morning. So just go over to Romans chapter 16. I want to bring some things to your attention this morning. Amen. This, I believe this is a message that the church desperately needs this morning. Praise God. Amen. I want you to look at Romans chapter 16. And, and uh, there, there's a number of greetings that the Apostle Paul uh, makes. He mentions a, a good number uh, of names are mentioned here. Uh, identifying with these different ones. I may try to read it. I, some of these names I read over yesterday a number of times trying to get some of these names correct, and I probably won't get them right. Amen. But it's, instead of just spending a lot of time with the names, and the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul, amen, it was Paul's heart that he recognized these individuals in the body of Christ. Amen. And there's, a, there's something else I want to bring out to you, and I, I, I bring it out in, in several different ways. But if you look, let's, let's ease back up to Romans chapter 15 and verse 32 this morning. I pray to God that these things will help us this morning. Amen. But look at verse 32. Paul uh, always desired to gather and assemble with the local assembly or the body of Christ. That was his desire. Amen. It, and he said in verse 32, and it's brought out here, and I bring it out in some other scriptures. It seems like that's where I'm going to start this morning. But in Romans chapter 15 and verse 32, Paul said that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God, amen, and, and may be with you and may with you be refreshed. Paul is saying here that I'm refreshed when I, when I, come, when I come to you, when I assemble together with the body of Christ, amen. Now let me say something. It's, it's, just, it's right on the tip of my tongue. Sometimes if I don't go ahead and say certain things, uh, I'll bypass it. But, you know, Paul was certainly a proclaimer. Amen. He was a preacher. He was a proclaimer of the gospel of Jesus Christ and him crucified. But let me say this this morning in addition to that. You know, there are a lot of proclaimers today. Amen. I be one. We have several in the, the audience here today. There are those who are listening uh, by Internet this morning that are indeed proclaimers. When I say that, I'm talking about they proclaim 
proclaimed the only gospel, which is Jesus Christ and him crucified. But let me say this, amen. You can be a proclaimer, but fruit is not found in the proclamation. Fruit is not found in the preaching. Yes, we need to preach, and I'm not making light of that. You need to hear with your spiritual ears this morning. Amen. Let the Lord help you to receive what's being said. Now, I won't have to repeat myself so many times. Amen. Yes, we need the preaching. How can faith come without there being a preacher? Amen. How precious are the feet of those, amen, that bring glad tidings of good things. Hallelujah. That bring to us the gospel of peace. Glory to God. There is no peace to be found in this world. Our peace comes only through faith in what Jesus did at Calvary where we're crucified with him uh, to this world and anything and everything that the enemy would use against us, amen. But the, the, the fruit is not found in the preaching of the cross or the preaching of the gospel, amen. Fruit comes from our believing it. Amen. There's a lot of proclaimers, amen, and uh, that's not altogether wrong or that's not altogether bad. Sometimes the motives are not necessarily right, but the fruit is because when we believe what is being heard, when we believe what is being preached, and when we believe it, there will be fruit. When we believe it, then there will be fruit. It's guaranteed. And fruit is something that you see. It's not hidden within that believer. Amen. It's on the branch. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're the branch. And if you abide in me, that means to have faith in him, what he did at Calvary, you shall bring forth much fruit. Amen. Now, once again, hear what I'm saying. We have to have the preaching of the gospel to get to this place and this understanding. But fruit comes when we believe what we're hearing and what we are preaching. Amen. You can preach something and not necessarily believe it. We can preach out of repetition based upon what we hear others say. Amen. I know what I'm talking about that because 20 years ago I was doing that. I was hearing the message of the cross and I just repeated what I heard. Amen. Praise. But it has to go. Uh, it has to get down in your heart. You have to believe it. And and when you believe it, then there will be fruit. Amen. And we see in the Apostle Paul's life here an evidence of that fruit that will manifest within the believer. Amen. You see the, the, the desire to gather with the body. We see the desire to gather, amen, with the saints of God. Do you see that in verse 32? He said that I may come unto you with joy by the will of God. Amen. And then we on to say and may be with you and that I may with you be refreshed. The body of Christ that he's writing to there, he knew that they would be refreshed when he came and that he would be refreshed. He would be refreshed, amen, because Paul was bringing the gospel, the good news, amen, but it's a refreshing when we come together in the body of Christ, those that are in one mind, in one accord, those that are operating according to the one spirit, those who have their faith anchored in the cross alone. It's a refreshing to find a body, a church, and a group of people such as that. Amen. Can I hear an amen? I've been in places where that wasn't the present. Amen. And it's not a it's not a happy place. It's not a good feeling. Amen. But we preach the gospel so that that might manifest within these other places, whatever those other places are. Amen. But listen to what he said, Paul. I'm still in Romans chapter. I'm still in Romans, but now I'm swinging back to Romans chapter 1 and verse 11. Listen to it again. Listen to the heart's cry of this man of God, this preacher of the gospel, amen. He said, for I, Romans chapter 1 verse 11, he said, for I long to see you, amen. It was more than just writing a letter to a body. It's more than making a post on Facebook. Hallelujah. There has to be more, amen, than being a Facebook preacher. I'm not against that. I'll be one, amen. But there should be the fruit, amen, of that believer is going to have a great desire to gather to those with those that the letter is being written to, amen. He said in Romans 1, chapter 11, for I long to see you. I long to be with you. I long to embrace you. I long to be in your presence that I 
I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together. Look what it says. That I may be comforted together. There's an assembly there, amen, or you would not be able to use the word together, amen. I, that I may be, that I may be the man of God, the, the cross preacher, the apostle Paul said, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. He's identifying with the mutual faith, amen, that's in both you and I. And I receive great comfort. I receive great joy. Now, the earlier part of that, when it says that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, that doesn't mean that Paul is going to impart spiritual gifts upon a person outside of the preaching of the cross. What he's identifying with there is preaching the cross to the people whereby that they might grow spiritually, amen, amen, that the, whereby they might grow spiritually speaking, we grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, and this comes by, number one, by hearing the word of God and hearing it preached in the context of the cross, and then life experience, we experience what we hear, amen, but let me, uh, let me say this real quick too, the preaching of the the gospel should never take place to our study of the word of God. Amen. We should study the word of God for ourselves. Amen. Are you with me this morning? Amen. Paul was excited over those in Berea because they received Berea. They received what he had to say. Amen. But they searched the word of God for themselves to see if those things are so. I believe that applies to us today. Amen. A healthy church is going to check behind the pastor. A healthy church is going to check behind the preacher, amen, not to make him out, amen, to be some type of a booger bear, amen, but the word of God is infallible, amen, men are fallible, we can all make mistakes, can anybody raise your hand and say, I know what you're talking about, preacher, amen, if you, do, if you, if you, if you don't, then you're a liar this morning, amen, praise God, but look what he says, let's stay with that subject for just a moment, look over to Philippians chapter 1, in verse 8, and he said, Philippians 1 and 8, he said, For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all. Amen. Hallelujah. He longed to be with the church in Philippi. Amen. I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. That means he longs to be with them out of the compassion of Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that's within him. Amen. He carried the same compassion of Jesus Christ that desired amen, to be in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Do you see that? And then one more here, 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 4, Paul said, I have remembrance of you night and day. In other words, Paul said, I can't get you off my mind. And many of you heard me say it. To me, Timothy is likened unto the, the church that follows the apostle Paul. Timothy is likened and to me a, a picture of the church that, that hears the teachings of the apostle Paul and attempts to follow him with everything that's within him. Amen. And we know this morning that we'll follow the apostle Paul as we follow Christ. Amen. By taking up the cross and denying ourselves. That's the only way that we can march with Paul. That's the only way that we can follow Jesus. Amen. There's no other way to follow Christ outside of taking up the cross and denying flesh and denying self of everything that flesh desires to be a part of. Amen. Can somebody say amen? So he said, I have remembrance of you night and day. Look what he said, greatly desiring to see you. Amen. Just writing a letter is good and necessary as it is. Paul dealt with many things, many issues, and many problems in the church by his epistles. Amen. But they never took the place. Amen. Uh, he was never satisfied. Amen. Just relying upon the letter itself. He always desired to be in that assembly and be among the brethren to embrace them physically speaking also and to allow them to embrace him. It was mutual feeling. Amen. Paul wanted to be with them. The body of Christ that the true body of Christ wanted Paul to be there as well. Amen. They had respect. They had honor. Amen. They, they, they cherished this 
great man of God that brought to them and brought to their ears and to their heart the way of God and the plan of salvation. Amen. Praise God. These were those that were brought in because Paul and or someone who were who was fathered by Paul and, and, and saved under his ministry, they now hear something that they have never heard before. It was a mystery to them, but now it's their message. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said that I have remembrance of you night and day, greatly desiring to see you, being mindful of your tears. Paul said, I'm mindful. I know that you shed tears because uh, Timothy was there. No doubt when Paul was taken uh, captive, when Paul was arrested and, and taken to Rome, no doubt it was Timothy, amen, shed many tears. Paul recognized that, amen, he, the man that he loved, the man that he followed, the man that, that taught him the understanding of the message of the cross. Paul said, I'm mindful of your tears that, that I may be filled with joy. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So Paul, once again, and we see this over and over in the Word of God. I just picked out a few there. Amen. Where Paul desired. He wasn't just a, you know, once again, he wasn't just a long-distance preacher. Amen. A lot of people can't assembly. Uh, the reason so many people have, uh, the, you know, and there's all sorts of excuses. Amen. A lot of people have a Facebook ministry because uh, they're unable to get along with the local body. Amen. So the retreat to a, a breakfast table ministry, and I do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. But I desire if there's true fruit that's being manifested within the hearts and the lives of the believer, that person is going to have a strong desire to gather with those of like faith, to embrace those and to be embraced by them. Do you see that this morning? But the modern day church has all Altered, amen, our identification of these of this fruit, amen, as it pertains to the assembly and as, as it pertains to giving as well, amen. If 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 you justify the uh, unjustify the necessity of assembling, amen, you have altered the need for giving, amen. And it goes hand in hand. Do you see that this morning? Praise God. So now, after having said all of that, let's go back to Philippians chapter uh, 16. And for the sake of time, I want you to read uh, those verses where it speaks about the, these different individuals that Paul mentioned in the church. In other words, with the Apostle Paul, amen, he, he would identify himself even at times as being the least of the apostles. He, he didn't build of himself some type of a reputation, amen. Yes, he identified himself as an apostle of Jesus Christ. That was necessary at times, amen, but he wasn't trying to build himself a reputation. Glory to God. And, and the Apostle Paul, I don't see where there was a big I and a little you, amen in his life and his ministry he recognized that everybody was important in the church and in the body of Christ when I say church I'm talking about the blood bought I'm talking about the body that has made Jesus the head amen I'm talking about the blood bought I'm talking about the redeemed I'm talking about those that are gathered around Calvary's cross that's the my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ this morning can somebody say amen so let me just let Leave that to your own reading. Amen. And he, he spoke about men. He spoke about women. He spoke about some that were deacons and deaconesses. Amen. He spoke about fellow laborers. He spoke about yoke fellows. He spoke about those that were helpers. Amen. Everyone <coughs> to the apostle Paul was important to him because they were all, amen, very important to God. Amen. There's no such thing as a little I or a little you. But I, this is all of that is bringing me down now, amen, to verse 17. Amen. Look at verse 17. We're Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. He, he acknowledges all of these, amen, that this letter is written to. Then in verse 17, he, he gives a warning, amen, and, and he, it's really a commandment. It's not a suggestion. 
Amen. The, the warnings that we give, amen, are in, and we see in the Word of God is, is a commandment for us to take heed, amen, and to us, for us to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, not only in the time of the Apostle Paul, but these warnings are applicable to us today as well. We need to take heed, amen. Uh, so much of the church, we want to brush these things off to that day and time. Well, that was for the time of the Apostle Paul. No, it's for our example. And it's for us today to take heed. Amen. Now stay with me. Amen. I know I'm moving a little swiftly this morning, but I got a lot I want to try to get in. So here with spiritual ears. Put your spiritual antennas up this morning and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to hear and receive what the Lord is saying. But he said there in, in verse 17, Now all of these that were mentioned, they belong to the body of Christ. They belonged to that cross-preaching church. They were followers of the apostle Paul. And he said in verse 17, he said, Now I beseech you, brethren. Amen. I beseech you, I beg you, I beg beg you, brethren, amen, mark them, amen, that means to identify them, amen, by name, identify them, mark them, amen, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, amen, that doctrine which they have learned is what? It's the doctrine of Christ, which is the message of the cross, which is the understanding of the new covenant, amen, the doctrine which you have learned that doctrine that I have brought to you, that which I preach to you, that which I have taught you today, I warn you to take heed, amen, and mark those that are attempting to cause divisions in the body of Christ. That man of God or that woman of God who is determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified is not uh, the problem. Amen. They're not the troublemakers. They're not the, the ones, amen, that's causing the problem. Amen. It's those that are trying to bring in a mixture, those that are trying to bring in leaven, those that are trying to bring in something else. Paul is saying, you know the truth. I've given it to you. You know, amen, the truth. Those that know the truth know who's telling the truth. Amen. And he said, you know the truth. That truth is what I've delivered to you. Mark anyone, identify with any of those that are tempting to try to move the body, amen, those creepers that come in that pervert the gospel and identify them for the sake of the body. Amen. Don't keep it a secret. Amen. Identify them for the sake of the body. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. Amen. And it didn't say put them on the platform, give them a microphone, make buddies and pals, have your picture taken. Amen. And have it put in the Charisma magazine or the evangelist. Amen. He said mark them. Amen. And avoid them. Turn from them. You're not to identify with them, you are to separate and to avoid them. That's what God is saying this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's, let me just go ahead and read verse 18. For they who are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. That means they serve their own selves. And he said, now look what he said there. And by good words and fair speeches, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. Praise God. They they deceive the hearts and the simple of the uh, of the simple, Amen. And once again, we see these in that church, Amen. That that God is identifying, Amen. That it should some of them, no doubt, are mature in the Lord, and they have been been brought into a place of oversight, whether they're pastors or whatever office they operate in, or maybe they're not operating in any office, but they're simply mature in the gospel, amen, now because of that maturity and understanding the truth, they have been placed in a, in a position of oversight, watching over the little lambs, watching over the new converts, watching over those who may not be as mature in the truth as others. And do you see what I'm saying this morning? Praise God. Amen. He said, by good words, what they have to say is going to sound good. It's going to sound right. Amen. They're going to come to you looking right and sounding right. Hello? 
Amen. Read what the Bible says this morning. Amen. By good words and fair speeches, amen, they deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me, I'm, I'm having trouble leaving. Are y'all y'all with me right there thus far? So let me move on. Amen. And look, let's look across the page there to verse 26. This gospel that we speak about, amen, is, but is now is made manifest, amen, by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God. Amen, we have this message because we have been, we have been made to see it in the scriptures, amen. Praise God. It's not something that just showed up 20 years ago and we embraced it, but no, amen, the preaching of the word of God in the context of the cross and then by the help of the revelating the revelation, the revelating work of the Holy Spirit, now our eyes have been opened and now we see that indeed this is the truth. We see it in the Word of God. It's not, it's not a revelation from God if we don't see it in the Word of God. Amen. But now, look, he said, let me read it again. Amen. But now, amen, speaking of us, the dispensation, the time in which we live, the church age. Amen. And we are in the, the we're on the backside of it. Amen. We're standing at the very threshold of the coming of our Lord and Savior. We're, we're on the backside. We're at the, the end of this road. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus is going to come any day now. Pray. Any moment, praise God, can somebody shout, amen. But now it's made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets, amen. In other words, everything that Paul taught that Jesus revealed to him, Galatians chapter 1, this revelation of the cross was revealed to him, but he taught it, amen, by using the Old Testament scriptures, amen. He would take the Old Testament, he would point to the New Testament or the New Covenant, by the old scriptures, amen. So it's revealed to us, are y'all with me? It's being revealed to us according to the word of God, amen. We preach the message of the cross not because famous men began to preach it 20 years ago, but because we saw it in the word of God. It took us a long time to see it, though. It took us years to be able to see it, amen. But one day, amen, it registered. One day, our eyes were opened. One day, amen, it clicked, glory to God, just like you turn a light switch on, and lo and behold, the cross is the answer to which we have need of. I'm not saying that because men have said that. I'm saying that because it's a revelation from the heart in this old country boy. Praise God. And I told the Lord, amen. I told the Lord, amen. I told the Lord, amen. From that day forward, I'm going to preach the cross, glory to God. And we, by the grace of God, and the help of God from that day forward, amen, and sometimes I stumbled, sometimes I missed it, sometimes I messed it up, sometimes I butchered it pretty badly, amen, but the focus was always on the cross, glory to God, and God has been faithful to reveal it to us, us, more and more, just as Paul revealed it to the church, and these that Paul mentioned, amen, they had the revelation and the understanding of the cross, so, it wasn't just a little pun here. It wasn't revealed to us because we saw something in the clouds. Amen. Do you see those pictures on, on fake books sometimes? Amen. Somebody uh, show a picture. Amen. It looks like Jesus walking on the clouds. Amen. And, you know, people always looking out into outer space, looking to the clouds. It wasn't revealed to us. Amen. Through a picture of something in the clouds. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was revealed to us. Amen. By the infallible word of God that's without error. Glory to God. It was revealed to us, praise God, will realize that God wants us to look ever to his son and what he did at Calvary, praise God. So he tells us, amen, to mark those and identify those that cause division in the body of Christ, amen, praise God, amen, and, and the, now having, <clears throat> excuse me, Having 
heard that, let's let's flip a page. Amen. Lord, help me what you would have me to do next. Let's go over now to Philippians, just a few pages over. Amen. You can just hold your place in, in Romans if you'd like. I'm not sure if we're going to get back to that or not. Amen. But just flip a page over and look at Philippians. And let's look at verse, uh, excuse me, chapter 3. Amen. And let's just read a little bit. Can we do that this morning? Praise God. All right, let's, uh, I'll tell you, a good place to start this morning, amen, is in verse 13. Amen. Paul said, brethren, I count not myself to apprehend it. In other words, what Paul is saying, I've not entered into absolute Christ likeness. There's always, hello, there's always an era that, there's always room for spiritual growth even in the apostle Paul if not there would be no need for him to be pressing toward a, a higher water mark amen he said brethren I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind that's important to you and I this morning I'm so glad this morning that 2023 is yesterday I'm so glad that 2023 has been a rough year. We've seen the good, we've seen the bad, we've seen the ugly. God's brought us a mighty long way. He promised to see us through, and he saw us through. I, and early in the year, I had great expectations for 2023. It didn't quite pan out like I had thought, amen. It got pretty rough in 2023, so I have to let that go, amen. No matter how hard or, or how bad I got, hurt in 2023, I got to let that go. If not, amen, that'll hold me in retreat. That'll hold me back. I had to put that under the blood. I had to forgive those that, that did me much damage. I have to put it all under the blood. I had to move forward, glory to God, to be any benefit for the kingdom of God. And he said there, amen, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended forgetting those things which are behind. He said, this one thing I do, I put it all behind me. Amen. Don't let it, don't, don't let yes, last year be an anchor to you. Amen. Cut rope with it and march on. Cut rope with it and move on. Cut rope with it and press on. Hallelujah. And Paul said, amen, reaching forth now. Hallelujah. God has great things in store. Amen. For those that are marching in God's army in this final hour. Yes, I know. Amen. It's a the Bible calls it a perilous time. Yes, I know there's going to be an increase in persecution. Yes, I know there's going to be trouble at times on every side. But in the midst of that trouble, in the midst of that persecution, in the midst of that storm, Jesus, amen, is going to be there walking on the water, speaking peace, glory to God, every step and every, every, every step of the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Reaching forth, reaching forth, pressing, amen, reaching forth unto the, those things which are before me, amen. And he said in verse 14, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That high calling of God is, make no mistake this morning, it's not material things. It's more Christ likeness. It's identifying with less of us and more in him. That pressing, I press toward the mark. I believe that means to us this morning that we're going deeper into death. Amen. Because that's the only place that self and flesh can be stripped away is to go deeper into death. Amen. That place that the Holy Spirit is always handing us over to. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 11. Amen. We're always pre presented and handed over and delivered unto death that the life of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Amen. Less of me and more of him. It's not going to happen unless we sink deeper into that death of the cross. Hallelujah. Come on now. That's what Jesus was preparing his disciples. Amen. He said in Luke chapter 9 verse 23, deny flesh, deny self. Take up the cross every day. Take it up daily and follow me.
me, unless we go deeper into that death, we will never be found following him pretty soon. Amen. We're going to be found following flesh again. Happy Lord. Are y'all with me this morning? Hallelujah. That the life of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Glory to God. Less of us, more of him. Going deeper into death. Hallelujah. You see, that's what separates the majority of the church right there. Then Brother Gaddy spoke about that just a little bit before the, the service. Amen. The, the church doesn't want flesh to be stripped away. They do not want to go deeper into death, amen. And that's what the cross is going to do. The Holy Spirit is going to come with a, a, a spiritual wrecking ball to tear down everything that's of flesh, everything that's of ourself, amen. He's going, he's going to come to destroy all of that, to strip us of those things, amen, so that there can be a closer walk with him, so that there can be a greater will of God carried out in our life, amen. Otherwise, flesh will always hold us back. How the flesh will be ruling and reigning on the throne of our heart. Crown King, crown Jesus King on the throne of your heart this morning and cling to that old rugged cross, glory to God, and follow Jesus into the great things that God has prepared for us in a palace in a difficult day. He's going to see us through. Amen. But it's not. He's not going to drag us through it. Amen. He's going to see us through it and he's going to provide the grace that Paul said, amen, that delivered him even out of the very mouth of the line. God is going to supply the grace that we need to be able to stand upright and march through the days ahead victorious in Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise be the name of the Lord. Somebody ought to shout this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's just stay right there for just a few moments. Paul said in verse 15, y'all having as much fun as I am this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. And <laughs> Praise God. And, and then let's just stay with Philippians for just a moment. I'm still on track. Amen. He said, he said in verse 15, let us therefore, as many as be perfect, amen, mature, be thus minded. And if in anything you be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Amen. You know, God's a keeper. I said, he's, a, he's our keeper this morning. I said, God, uh, he's our keeper this morning. He brought us into this gospel. Amen. In the moment that you began to, uh, to, to look to something else, God sees it. He knows it. And guess what's going to happen? Amen. The hounds of heaven are going to start barking at your heels. Amen. He's going to send the Holy Spirit. Amen. To bring conviction. And he's going to put some preacher out in front of you that's preaching the, 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 the message of the cross exclusively to get you back on track. Amen. That's how God works. Amen. And if it please is God by the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. Glory to God. Well, praise God. Y'all don't get so excited. And he said there, amen, nevertheless, verse 16, this is where I'm headed, amen, nevertheless, where to we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. That same rule there is the same gospel, amen, the message of the cross, Romans chapter 6 in verse 17, not ashamed of the gospel, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Paul rejoiced over those that he mentioned all those names earlier, amen, because they mind the same thing as the apostle Paul. Amen. They walk by the same rule. What is that rule? Well, it's quite simply what most of the church is despising that today. It's our determination to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's realizing that our only hope is found in Calvary's cross by that rule, amen, the, 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 the law of faith, hallelujah, the law of the Spirit, the only place that the Holy, the Holy Spirit works, amen, let us mind and walk in this same rule. It's, it's, 
God's word and the Holy Spirit and God's preachers, amen, are keeping us on this straight and narrow pathway because it's the only place that is identified as the path of the just, amen, where the light, amen, shines brighter and brighter into that perfect day. You move over to something else, my friend, and force your way over to another pathway, what's going to happen, you'll be leaving the light and what light you have received will be removed. Jesus warned and said, take heed that your light be not darkness. What you claim to be light, that it's not actually darkness. Amen. Okay. Hallelujah. I got to try to get to verse 17. Amen. And then he said, brethren, be followers together of me. Now, I'm not going to make too much of that. Amen. But Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. Brethren, be followers together of me. Amen. Paul set himself up as an example to the body of Christ. His message, his lifestyle. Amen. If you've got the message, if you're walking in, if you believe in it, your lifestyle will change. Amen. Hallelujah. I said your lifestyle will change. There's going to be a change, amen, because the power of God is now working in your life. It's no longer the power of the sin nature at work, but it's the power of God. It's a divine nature that, that's now working in your life. Hallelujah. Nevertheless, verse 16, nevertheless, now 17, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk also or walk so as you have us. Now notice it, I got us circled there. Amen. So he's speaking about those that are following Paul, amen, or at least following his message, that are embracing the message of the cross. Amen. He said, mark them also. Amen. Just as you're to mark those that bring something contrary to the message of the cross to the table, mark those that are eating from the table of the sacrifice. Amen. He said, let us walk. Amen. By the same rule, let us mind the same through for the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk also as you have our soul, as you have us for an example. Amen. Amen. The reason, once again, Paul mentioned all of those names, and Paul was a, he, he was a champion at doing this. Paul would often mention many names of those uh, fellow laborers and co-workers in the body of Christ. He would mention their name, speak about how important they was to him and to the body of Christ, amen. But all of those, he's identifying them, amen, not just to mention their name, amen, but to identify them as being among those that we can follow, that we can look to, that we can embrace, that we can that we can glean from, that we can grow, that we can benefit from. Hallelujah. There's a number of people, and I'm going to, not going to start mentioning names, amen, but there's a number of people that have benefited me over the years, and I have learned to, to walk closely with these, amen, and to lock arms with these, amen, but also I'm wise enough, amen, to realize that uh, if Jimmy Swagger can fall, anybody can fall. Hallelujah. Amen. And I'm wise enough to know that even those that are closest to me, amen, let me always be wise enough to line their ministry up with the Word of God. Amen. Uh, the Apostle Paul, if he was standing here today, he would teach that same thing. The biggest mistake that you can make, and we have made this mistake, the biggest mistake that you can make, amen, is listen to a preacher, amen, all of your life or Sunday after Sunday and just simply to buy all on everything that he says, not not with not without not aligning it with the word of God. That is a huge mistake. You are setting yourself up for huge fall, for deception, amen, and even the loss of your soul if you continue to operate in that capacity. Somebody say amen. 
Amen. We never look away from the word of God. Amen. It's the litmus test and the gauge whereby, whereby we determine what is of God and what isn't of God. Amen. But he said there, amen, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. So Paul did not have a problem with pointing the body of Christ to other individuals and saying, and you need to observe this individual and follow him. You need to pattern your life after that individual. Amen. The modern day church, we fail sometimes. We build this little island for ourselves. Amen. And, and, we, and, we look, and this is what, what I see. If no one is found worthy of our fellowship, then we have built for ourselves an island called pride. Let me say that again in case, in case you were digging wax out of your ear. Amen. If no one is found worthy of our fellowship, then we have built for ourselves an island called pride. Amen. We have been called to separation, not isolation. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 and 17. We dealt with it Wednesday night. Yes, we're to separate ourselves from that unclean thing. Touch not, embrace not that unclean thing. What is that unclean thing? It's anything that will move us away from the message of the cross exclusively. Amen. Embrace not that unclean thing. And God said, and then I will receive you. Amen. So God is saying, if you embrace every bandwagon that comes to town, there's no cleansing power in anything except the blood. There's no cleansing power in anything except embracing the cross by faith. There's no cleansing power in anything except the blood. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Oh, precious is the flow. Glory to God that washes white as snow. God, let that, let that well of cleansing, let it spring up within my heart, in my soul. Amen. <laughs> Jesus told Simon Peter, said, I'm going to wash your feet. Simon Peter, no sir, not today. Jesus said, amen, if, it, if I don't wash your feet, you'll have no part for, with me. Jesus said, well, if that's the case, wash me all all over. Wash me from my head all the way down to the toe. Amen. Let there be a cleansing. Let there be a deep cleansing. Go deep into the recesses of my being, my soul, and my heart. Let there be a cleansing. Let there be a purging. Glory to God. Somebody say amen. amen. <sighs> Hallelujah. Y'all still with me? It's interesting that I understand that the the scriptures the, were written by the translators, but it's interesting that both Romans chapter 16 and verse 17 and Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17 both speak of that mark. One is being marked to avoid, and the other one is being marked and identified that you should follow and to partner with and identify with. Amen. Uh, it says... <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. When it says mark them in, in Philippians here, amen, it, it's, it means to fix our attention on and to observe one's life, looking for an example of Paul's own manner of life, looking for a new way of life and living, which after Christ which produces a walk and a lifestyle unlike anything else in the world. God stand, listen to me. God's standard of righteousness demanded by God is summed up in the Ten Commandments and the law. Amen. Mainly the Ten Commandments. I know there's other sins that, that Jesus died on the cross. He dealt with the sin nature. I understand that. Just stay with me for just a moment. Amen. God's standard of righteousness demanded by God is summed up in the Ten Commandments and are now kept but by a different means than anyone has ever known. 
Amen. Jesus Christ kept the law perfectly. Amen. Which includes the Ten Commandments. He never failed even on one single time, amen, as our representative man, God gave us the perfection of Christ based upon our faith registered in him and what he did on the cross. Now, y'all, are y'all hearing me this morning? I don't know what, what that does for you. That ought to make a mummy shout, amen. The, 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 the law, amen, is God's, amen, standard of righteousness. And God demands that out of all of us. Amen, but the law brought no power and no ability for us to do what God commanded. So God sent Jesus Christ, our representative man. He kept the law for us, hallelujah, amen, and set us free, glory to God. He is our representative man, glory to God. God gave us the perfection of Christ based upon our faith registered in him and what he did on the cross he done for us what we could not do for ourselves amen amen so let's let's just back it up a little bit how what do you say amen let's go to Romans chapter 8 verse 1 some of the most important important verses of scripture in the word of God well, let's read a little bit again Romans chapter 8 and verse 1 there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I didn't make me. Amen. God made me. Amen. Free from the law of sin and death. Amen. And he said in verse 3, for what the, look what it says, for what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. Amen. What was meant to condemn us, Christ condemned in his flesh on the cross. Look what it says, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Walking in the flesh is us trying to do what only God can do. Walking after the spirit is us humbling ourselves to God's only way, which is faith alone in what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Can some Somebody say amen. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. The reason we or anyone is failing is because we are not looking to the cross. The only reason for failure, the only reason for death, <laughs> the only reason for condemnation, the only reason for any of these things is because we're not looking to the cross. Hallelujah. You cannot sin and embrace the lamb that takes away sin. Think about that. Hallelujah. The sin nature rises. The flesh begins to be crowned on the throne of your heart. Amen. The moment that you began to look to something else other than what Jesus did at Calvary, the finished work of the cross. I know this is hard for us, but we're trying to learn some things this morning. Amen. The moment that we look our eyes, took our, take our eyes off of the cross and what Jesus did, we'll find ourselves in trouble. There'll be a failure. Amen. There'll ultimately be death if we stay there. Amen. That's the and the matches that's going out to the body of Christ that you mark those that have influenced you and now you begin to look to those that are walking in victory that's following the apostle Paul once again amen everybody is going to follow somebody and the word of God says you follow and you mark those amen that are walking in the victory because they're following the teachings of the apostle Paul that means they're determined to know nothing amen every hour of the day 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Amen. They're wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. Praise God. Anybody still with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The work of the fivefold ministry 
is to fasten our eyes to the cross. Amen. Because that's the only place you can be established, stabilized, steadfast. The work of the fivefold ministry is to fasten our eyes to the cross, to fix our vision, to see only what Christ has done on the cross. A couple of verses to back that up. Just going to give it to you. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Amen. Looking unto Jesus. Our eyes upon Christ, the person, Jesus Christ, what he did at Calvary. Both of these verses has Jesus tied to the cross. Let me, let me say that differently. It's not just those two verses but the Bible in its entirety has Jesus tied to the cross. Oh, it's not the gospel. Amen. It's Christ and him crucified that make the scriptures the gospel to us. Amen. That is the truth that sets free that Jesus spoke about. You shall know the truth and you shall be set free. You shall be made free. And whom the Son has made free is free indeed. Paul would say in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1, he would say stand. In other words, he gave us orders like a general in God's army. Galatians 5 and 1, he said, Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free and be not entangled again. Everybody say again. And Paul said, Be not entangled again in the yoke of bondage. That means that you can be entangled again in the yoke of bondage when you're no longer standing with your eyes fixed upon Jesus Christ, what he did at Calvary. That'll make you cry. Side. Glory to God. I can't get my eyes off of what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. Apart from that, flesh starts to scream. Flesh starts to whine. Flesh starts to holler. And then you know what's going to happen when flesh is doing all of that? Amen. You're going to start looking to your ministry. You're going to start looking to a minister. You're going to start looking to a denomination. You're going to start looking to your wife. You're going to start looking to your spouse. You're going to start looking to your own right self. Amen. 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 Isn't this good? Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Second Corinthians is going along with what I just said. I know we're traveling, covering a lot of scriptures, amen. My brother James that took his coat off over here. Praise God, it must be heating up in here. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18. Second Corinthians 3 and 18. But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass or a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image. That same image is the image of Christ. From glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Only as we behold Christ as the Lamb of, at Calvary are we looking into the mirror and seeing what our God is doing in and to us. Amen. We're looking into that mirror. Amen. The Word of God and the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to us who we are and what we have need of. And going to reveal to us that the answer is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And as we remain looking into that, that mirror, that glass, that looking to Jesus and what He did at Calvary, seeking deeper and deeper into death and our union with Christ, amen, through faith, amen, He's going to show us and reveal us along the way the glory, amen, that He's producing in our life, amen, the light that's manifesting in our life, the the, the path of the just, that, that's the place that the light manifests more and more into that perfect day. We will see these things. We will recognize these things. We will know that it's God at work. Amen. Paul said, when I come to you, I'm not going to come to you with the wisdom of men, not with the wisdom of Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle, or any of the great thinkers of that day and time, but I'm going to 
come to you in the wisdom and the power of God. Amen. That your faith not stand in the wisdom of God, but you're able to stand in the power of God. Hallelujah. I'm going to come preaching the cross for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but to us which are saved. It is the power of God. It is the wisdom of God. It is the testimony of God. It's the only thing that God is speaking about. Hallelujah. Hope I said some of that right. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Page two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The, the, the devil's table. May kind of shifting gears here a little bit. Got a little time left. Amen. The devil's table. And I, I, I borrowed this from somebody. Can't remember who it was. The devil's table is May is is inside the prison of sin. The devil's table is inside the prison of sin. God's table is the lamb that takes away sin. Hallelujah. The majority of the church, and I'm trying to help some folks, we don't understand the cross any further than just the an object of salvation. Our entrance into salvation is that or you're not saved. That's saved if you come down, shake the preacher's hand, sign a card, get baptized in water. You're just a wet sinner. Amen. You're only saved by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary and you understanding that. You understanding that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. And without the root, Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission or removal of sin. It all comes through the blood. But after we're saved by the blood, we walk in that same redeeming faith daily. Amen. Amen. Colossians 2 and 6, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. We come in by the blood when I say the blood, I'm talking about the blood of the cross, just as Paul did in Colossians chapter 1 and verse 20. Peace comes by the blood of the cross. Enmity has been removed. Relationship is established with God. Hallelujah. Through the blood of that one mediator, and that mediator is Christ Jesus. Are y'all with me? So the same cross that saved us is the same cross that keeps us, matures us, teaches us, the same, it's the same redeeming faith that will take us all the way home, predicated and of necessity. Colossians 1 and 23, that we continue in this faith, being stabilized, steadfast in the faith, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. There's no hope in anything else today. Amen. There's no, you bow down, kiss the Pope's toe all you want to. There's no hope in any of that. Amen. Might make you feel very religious. Amen. Might make you tickle the flesh, make you feel like you, you, you march around Mecca. Amen. You light a million candles. God doesn't recognize it. Amen. That which is a sweet smelling savor unto him is the smell of the sacrifice. What God honors is the blood. What God honors is faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. What God honors is what he gave us and he gave us the faith and he gave us what to put our faith in. He gave us his son. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That everlasting life is an abundant life. He found me in the gutter lost and saved me to the uttermost. Glory to God. It's an abundant life. It's a victorious life. It's a life of plenty. It's a life where he promised he will provide our every need. Romans 8 and 32. Amen. How shall God not with him Christ crucified all so freely give us all things. Simon Peter said, Amen. First Peter chapter 1 in verse 3. Amen. But, 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 amen. He has provided us all things that pertains to life and godliness by his divine power. Power, and that divine power only flows from Calvary's cross. Amen. Amen. That our faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
amen, the purpose of the five-fold ministry once again, amen, is to help us to keep our eyes on Calvary, amen, to help us keep our uh, eyes locked in on what Jesus did at Calvary. Amen. So the local assembly, Paul identified with that. We, we established that, amen, earlier. But Paul, amen, he saw the necessity uh, of being involved in the local assembly. Let me just drive it home a little bit further. Go over to Hebrews. You already know where I'm headed. A lot of people don't like this. A lot of people don't like this, especially this verse of Scripture. Because they, they got all kinds of excuses, amen, what, why they have built a little island out here. They segregated themselves from the church. They, they, they're separate from the church once again because they can't get along with the body. Look what it says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, and I'm trying to figure out how to close this. He said uh, in verse 23, he said, let us hold fast. Hold fast. Don't let it slip. Hold tight. Amen. Hold fast. Amen. Let us hold fast. Amen. The profession of our faith without wavering. I understand those words easily. Amen. They mean, exa they mean exactly what they say. The, the high point it is that we continue in the faith, that we hold fast. Amen. The profession of our faith. Amen. Without wavering. For he is faithful who promised. But I want you to notice that Paul tied to the importance of proper faith, the, the need and the importance of the local assembly. Because if you look in verse 24, you see that word and right and that word and means that what was just written in verse 23 amen the next statement is just as important as having your faith in the proper object and that you hold on to it and the reason Paul knew that it was important is because he knew that the believer needed to be surrounded by other believers to encourage and help that person glory to pray for them to stand with them glory to Paul knew, amen, that we need, you need me. I know I'm hard to look at at times, but you need me, amen, but I need you. Amen. We need each other. Amen. Amen. And I, 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 just hang on. So he said, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful who is promised. And it says, and, and. Now the modern day church is stricken Verse 24, amen, but once again, the reason for that, they're proclaimers, amen, but if you believe what the Bible says, there'll be fruit, and if there's fruit, there's going to be a desire to assemble. Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Hallelujah. To provoke, to encourage, to provoke, unto love and to good works. I believe the, the good works that we can include the things we do, but I think it more so identifies with the good works of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, what he's doing. Amen. Provoking the assembly, provoking one another unto the good works of the Holy Spirit. Not so much as what I do, not so much what you do, but what the Holy Spirit is doing because of our faith in the cross. Amen. Do you see that this morning? Amen. We, we need each other to provoke and encourage one another. Don't get wrapped up in your good works. Stay wrapped up in the good work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Which comes our way by the finished work of Christ on the cross. Amen. Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. He set me free. He made me free. I submitted to the workmanship of God. I submitted to the operation of God. I submitted, amen, to God by faith in what Jesus did at Calvary. If you don't do that, you, God calls you a child and children of disobedience. You might go to church. You might put $1,000 in the plate. Amen. If you are, well, let's pass the plate again. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Amen. Now I forgot what I was going to say. Let's move on. Amen. And he said, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Let me say it like this. I like saying it like this. We are Pentecostal. I'm Pentecostal to the bone. Amen. But it's because of what Jesus did at Calvary that we had the goods. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't be Pentecostal and, and not be a part of the local assembly. Hallelujah. Because uh, that is all for the benefit of the body. Hallelujah. That is for all. all see, it's not for just us to have a name tag. Oh, I'm Pentecostal. I speak in tongues. What about the gifts of the Holy Spirit that he desires to manifest in me and you? Amen. What about a message in tongues? Is that for just you and your baby? Amen. No. And, and, your, and your Labrador retriever? No. That's for the body. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The gifts are for the body. Amen. For the body. For the body of Christ. Amen. It's not just to give me a title. I'm a tongue talker, amen, over here on some island apart from the body, amen. It's to profit the body, amen. When a message in tongues interpretation goes out, amen, I benefit. It, I, God's never used me in that gift, but I thank God that he does use some in that gift. <coughs> and when he does, I benefit. It's encouraging to me. Amen. That great move and work of the Holy Spirit. He says things through that gift that I need to know, that I need to hear right then that makes a life-changing difference in my life and in my daily walk. It's great encouragement. And then sometimes, there might be a rebuke in that message that I need to hear and you do too. <laughs> the woman preacher said one time, uh-oh, how, how'd she say? Uh, let's see. Only those, only those, only those that are able, listen to me, I want to repeat myself. Only, this is a good Facebooker. Only those that are able to endure the rebuke will go on to become all that God desires of them. <laughs> because God chases, rebukes, reproves those that he loves. Hallelujah. Amen. So many people, you know, they, they can't endure it. Well, praise God. You know what their excuse is? I got offended this morning. See, the, the church is traded. I need to repent for I've been offended. <laughs> Ain't nobody been rebuked any more than I have. And I'm still in. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. But bring it if I need it. Send it, Lord, if I need it. Okay. Y'all with me thus far? And then it says, I'm just going to have to quit there. But it said, but exhorting one another. And so much the more. Not less. I don't know what I do. About these. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. The, now the thing of it is, what you've got to understand, written in Paul's time, that day has already got here. That day has arrived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The day which is the last days of the church age, just before the return of Christ, as you see that day approaching, as Brother Denny explained this morning, is the difficult, perilous times that will take place right before the rapture. We're not talking about the great tribulation, amen, but the, the, the shaking of the church that's taking a place right now. Everything that can be shaken is being shaken, and it's being shaken right now. Especially as you see that day approaching. For us, it's arrived. We need to realize that. Perilous days are not coming. They're here. 
The day of persecution is not on the horizon. It's here. Okay. Now, I've spoken about how important the body is. I'm going to maybe five, possibly ten more minutes. If I go with 12, I will promise not charge you anymore. Now, I'm going to paraphrase, paraphrase this. Now, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. You need to go there and see this. Instead of reading all of these verses, I'm going to select one or two. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in verse 20. If I don't have the right place, somebody yells, say, you ain't got the right place. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, well, sometimes I can't read my own writing. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. I'm going to deal with verse 20 through verse 23. Now look what it says there, and I'm paraphrasing uh, in a few places, but what I say is going to be exactly what it's saying. Notice this is the Apostle Paul. There are many members. Amen. That's speaking of the worldwide spiritual church, the body of Christ. Amen. There are many members but one body. Amen. There are many members, but one body. Now look what it says, and it says, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you. Nor again the head to the feet. Everybody wants to be the head, nobody wants to be the feet. <laughs> you ever notice that? Everybody wants to be the head, and, and you recognize that at times because some use the weakness of others to promote themselves. Oh, that's prideful. That just causes strife and all sorts of wicked works. But you see that in Philippians chapter 1, verse 16. Just make a side note with the Apostle Paul. Some use the weakness of others to promote themselves. Now let me go back to what I was reading. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Right? You remember Paul? Oh, he mentioned all of these people, their importance of being in the body of Christ, some that we would never hear their name if it had not been for the Apostle Paul. They were significant to Paul. They were significant to the body of Christ. I said something earlier about the, 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 the breakfast table preacher. I didn't mean that in a bad way. Some do that because they want to justify what they're doing and, and be apart from attending the local body. Some do that. Amen, but those others, amen, that, that, that's the only choice they have. God sees them as being a member in his body, wherever they are. Hallelujah. But it... He says, the, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. No, much more those members of the body, which, look what it says, which seem to be more feeble. I had the word seem underscored. That's important. To us, certain ones may seem to be unimportant but nobody's unimportant in the body of Christ to God. You see how flesh can get involved in so much and we can, we can think, well, you know, they're insignificant to the body. They're not adding anything to the body. God says their place, if it's just sitting on a pew, amen, is important to the body of Christ and you better recognize it, glory to God. He says, these members of the body which seem to be more feeble, that means that they're weak and seemingly ineffective. Look what he said, are necessary. They are necessary. Right? Y'all seeing this? 
God says they are necessary. They're necessary. Amen. The, the modern day church gets caught up in the platform. They get caught up in the limelight. They get caught up in the spotlight. They get caught up in titles and names and personalities and followings. And God says those that seem to us to be ineffective, they're weak, more feeble, are necessary. They're necessary to him. They better be necessary to us, whoever they are. Amen. Now look what it says, and I'm coming to a place to close here, and it says, And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now let me, let me, as the internal organs, think, think about it in the, in the human body for just a moment. As the internal organs are out of sight, how many of you can see your inside? They're out of sight. But guess what? They're called vital. <laughs> They're called vital. They're out of sight. But to you, they're vital. Because without those unseen parts, you can't live. And those members of the body which we, it's interesting, the Holy Spirit, it's not necessarily what God is saying, but we sometimes think to be less honorable. Upon these we bestow more abundant honor as the internal organs are out of sight. But the body could not function without any of those which we call vital. As Paul mentioned once again, and I will close here, because I think if I go on, you'll forget what we've already said. I want you to stay focused upon what you heard this morning. And the reason Paul mentioned all of these members by their name, he considered them all to be vital. Amen. Praise God. Amen and amen. Can you give the Lord a good hand clap of praise this morning? I don't know about you, but that's just what I needed to hear this morning. Amen. I'm going to ask Sister Debbie and uh, Brother Danny, Sister Wendy, if you would, whichever, come on up. We're going to open up the, the front, the altar. We, I'm going to invite everybody to come down this morning. Just spend another minute or two in the presence of the Lord. Just take care of business. For most of us, we took care of it right there in the altar. You know, you can repent right there. I mean, in the seat, right there in the pew. We can repent right there. I don't know. It's just something about a good old-fashioned altar call. Amen. I just can't hardly operate without it. Amen. Let's all gather down front. Let's all press forward. This morning, if you have unsettled business this morning, just tell the Lord all about it. Hallelujah. Lord, I come to you this morning. With open arms, I have nothing to bring. I have no gift to bring. You are that gift this morning. You are that great treasure that we have in earthen vessels this morning. Oh, what a treasure. That pearl of great price, his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Just settle it this morning. Just take care of business with the Lord. Just tell him all about it. He says again this morning, he says, cast your every care upon me because he cares for you. The great thing is not only do we serve a God that cares for you this morning, but he's the only one that can do anything about it. I love you this morning. I care for you each and every one. You're precious to me this morning. I can't really help you. Best I can do is to point you to the man Jesus Christ this morning when he did it Calvary. The answer this morning is let us sink deeper 
into death. God, get me out of the way so that Christ can be experienced, so that Christ can be seen. Let me be sink deeper into the death of the cross this morning. Hallelujah. That's what sanctification is all about. Sanctification is a greater identification with our death on the cross. Hallelujah. More and more. And when we do that, what's going to rise up is more of Jesus, more of Him, less of me. Oh, just tell Him all about it this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, my Lord and my God, thank you, Jesus. Just lift your hands and give it praise. Yes, Lord, do it, Lord, do it again. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, that I might have the mind of Christ. Transform me. Yes, take my will. Transform it to your will. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the precious Lamb. Oh, just lift your hands and give Him praise. Lift your hands and worship Him. Lift him hand, lift your hands and give him praise. The house of God this morning. Do it, O oh Lord. Change my mind. Transform it that I might have the mind of Christ. Yes, Lord. Righteousness. righteousness is what I long for. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Only through the cross. is what I need. My Lord and my God. Righteousness. Righteousness is what you Thank you, Lord. Take Thank you. My heart oh, hallelujah. Start with me, oh, Lord. Let it be me, God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. presence of the Spirit this morning. I know the Lord this morning desires, and I believe He has done a work in all of us. He spoke to all of us this morning through His Word. I believe what we heard this morning is exactly what we needed to hear as we enter into 2024. Amen. Sleep 23 behind us. All the blunders, all the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. God is good. He knows exactly what we have need of. He knows exactly 
what we have need of. I want you to give the Lord another good hand clap of praise. Take just a moment to embrace. Be sure and, and march by and embrace our brother from from uh, he come uh, drove all the way from uh, Tuscaloosa this morning to be with us, brother brother Gaddy. Amen. We're glad to have him. Amen. I love you each and every one. Amen. Praise. Meditate. Think upon these things that that we've heard this morning. Amen. Let it get deep down in, in your spirit this morning. Amen. Be back with me Tuesday morning for the Tuesday morning trumpet at 9 o'clock. Right there on Facebook. No other place. Hope to see you then. God bless you. Love you each and every one. Fellowship for just a moment. Amen.